I didn't know if you were taking a picture. staying out on the roads for y'all to help keep you safe? Um, are you part of the media? I am. Yeah, I'm not going to answer any questions. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Tell me, um, get, uh, send me to one of your organizers. Yes. Or point, um, point one of them out. I, I, I'm sorry. I should have asked. That's all right. No worries. Um, yeah, I think that they're over, like, in that kind of area. There are people who are, like, media trained who we would prefer you speak right, to. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I think they were having a meeting. I think I passed them. I know where, okay. I know where you're talking about. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Y'all stay safe. All right. I never see I never see no pictures or videos of people. I have a bunch. That's why I feel like so invincible. Like I can go and have my picture. Yeah.
Hello, everyone. Is that better? Hi. Y'all got to tap into this conversation. I promise you're going to want to hear from it, and you're going to want to hear from yourself, too. This is a great opportunity to go to the community. There's a lot of us here.
is everyone comfortable? I said, is everyone comfortable? All right, you ready to get started? All right, perfect. Okay. How's everyone feeling? Okay, we can work with that. Um, so I want to start off our discussion by talking about how what we're feeling right now, um, good or bad, how this is all just, this is part of struggle, right? And there are going to be difficulties in staying steadfast with our goals and our values. It's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be great, but we know why we're here and that keeps us going. And this community keeps us going. There's an amazing amount of people here that are all fighting for the same goals and the same demands. And we might not all be on the same page about everything. We all come from different walks of life, but we are here for divestment. We are here for Gaza. And we know that we are all here for that reason. Some of you, especially the ones that have been staying overnight, thank you. Um, yeah. It's hard, right? Like, I don't want to discount that at all. It's hard to leave your home and stay in a tent. It's hard to not have a secure place to use the restroom, not have secure housing, not know whether in the middle of the night you will be kidnapped or you're going to be under a raid or you're going to be barricaded in. Um, it's hard not knowing, you know, oh, where's the water? Where's the food? There's definitely difficulties, but... Um, this is nothing compared to what is going on in Gaza. And they are facing this on a level that we could never understand. For those of us who are staying overnight, you're starting to understand it, right? You're starting to see, oh, like this, this is real. Um, imagine you're living in tents that are not as nice as these for months and months, not knowing whether you're going to fall asleep and wake up to being bombed, to being pulled out of your house, and kidnapped, stripped naked, um, shoved on a bus, shoved on a truck. You know, you, your kids um, be bombed. You don't know what's gonna happen. So I want us to keep that in mind. Whenever we think about our struggles, we can, we can validate them and we can talk about our struggles, but we also have to remember that what we're doing this for, and we're doing this for Gaza, and this is nothing compared to what they're going through. And if we can do this, and we can sustain this in order to achieve our demands and have a positive effect and lessen the genocide that is happening, then that's what we'll do. We will stay here until our demands are met. By a show of hands, who here has been with us since Thursday? Wow. A lot has changed since Thursday. We're in a very different place than where we were. Um, we were forced into an arbitrary binary of an internal and an external camp. But there is just camp. And we have liberated that. And we are just camp. Smooth steadfastness is our umbrella. Um, there are multiple things that happen under this umbrella. 
there's victory. And I think right now we're sitting in a victory. We stormed and took this fucking place, you know. <laughs> Under victory, there are wins. Um, and, and, and the win, the material consequence, is conjoining these two camps, abolishing these arbitrary pioneers. Um, and followed by that is principle. So what we're investigating here is why we were able to um, have these wins and these victories um, and, uh, and how we remain principled in our demands. Um, repeat after me. Palestine is our demand. Palestine is our demand. No peace on stolen land. Palestine is our demand. No peace on stolen land. We do not recognize corporate hegemony. You yard is stolen land, and we took it back. I want to give a reminder to what we're here for, what exactly, because we will reiterate these demands over and over. I don't care how sick of them you get, because this is what we're here for, and we're going to keep reiterating them. Number one, each university must drop all charges against student organizers and student groups. Number two, each university must protect pro-Palestinian speech on campus. Number three, each university must divest from all companies selling technology and weapons to the Zionist regime. Number four, each university must immediately disclose all endowments and investments. And number five, each university should immediately end all academic partnerships with the State of Israel. These are our uniting demands, and no matter where we come from, no matter what school we come from, all of our universities are doing these things and are complicit in them. So that is why some of us are here from Georgetown, some of us are here from AU, some of us from Baltimore, from Virginia. You know, we're all here for these same demands um, to uplift our comrades at GW, but also to pressure our own administrations. Um, we will stay here until our demands are met, and we've shown that we can be steadfast and we can push further and further, and we can reclaim the already liberated zone, we can re-liberate it, and we can continue to push in that way until our demands are met. So how did we get here? This is the fifth day of the liberated zone. On the fourth day, we were still, and by we, I mean the collective, this is just the one. We are just the one. The collective was limited. It was fractured and it was imposed by the binary evils of administration and the police. We recognized as a collective that the camp outside, the camp inside, these were not two separate things. These were org organized and existing for the same reason, with the same demands, the same principle, and with the same struggle, would we push these things forward. Through recognizing the limits of the false borders that were erected around the quote-unquote internal, we, as a collective, decided to storm them and abolish them and create something new. When we're looking forward, we don't think that there's another way to move us. There's something about gr being grounded in steadfastness and smooth. Our external conditions are constantly shifting, they are constantly changing, and that is a consequence of colonialism, imperialism, capitalism. It alienates us, it makes us non-human, and it makes us unable to understand each other. I don't know about you guys, my creative abilities have been restored through the restrictions of this camp. The community's creative abilities have been restored and therefore the community's security in our home has been restored. 
the community's security and our demands are restored. And the, uni and the collective's security and our end goal of a liberated Palestine is secured. So what do we mean when we talk, to, when we talk about principled struggle? What are our principles? How is it that we use these principles to create a liberated zone where all of us feel safer than we ever have in the past six months, where we feel that we are all on the same level, there are no power structures, there are no repressive, you know, repressive, repressive regimes. Um, we are principled because we are in solidarity with all oppressed people. We are in solidarity with each other as community. We respect that community. We respect each other, and I think that is the basis of everything. Um, we, as students, are on the front lines, and we, our universities, are directly funding a genocide, and as students, we have power to change that. We are giving our money, and that means those administrations have to listen to us. No matter what they try, they ultimately have to listen to us. We care about each other. We care about our people. We care about the space that we're taking up. You know, last night, it was, it was chaos, and it was cleaned up in a matter of hours. Everyone got all comfy in their tents. Everyone found their friends. We take care of each other. We take care of the land. We take care of nature. Our enemy, who sometimes can divide us, is admin and is the police. And we cannot let that get in between us. We cannot let that get to us because we standing here are stronger than any of them. They back down to us. You guys scared the cops. They were scared. And if we, if we keep up these numbers, if we keep up this community, we will continue to claim that power. They will continue to be scared of us and they will eventually bow down to our demands. We understand that the empire glares and gnashes its teeth when it's the most vulnerable. It is gnashing its teeth at our ankles constantly because it is scared. When they escalate in violence, when they become more violent, when these empires, when these oppressive hegemonies become more violent, it is because they are losing control. And looking around, it looks like they've lost control because the people are in control. I think about the eternal martyr, Walid Baka. When we win, we stay steadfast. We stay strong to our principle and we do not falter in the face of imperialism. It might be scary to look at in the eye, but it, trust me, it is 10 times more scared of us. <laughs>